Yo, what's up everybody? It's Connor from Unscripted, back in with another video. In today's video, we have some CDL news to talk about, could be potentially some big news in there, and some Challenger Elite updates to talk about as well, and as always, we are doing things off the script. Before we hop into the video today, as always, don't forget to leave a like down below if you enjoy, leave a comment as well with your thoughts on what we talk about today, and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the videos from me and you want to see more videos like this one from me in the future. I appreciate it all. It means a lot to me as, I, as you help me grow this channel, and I just really, really appreciate it, so... With that said, let's hop right in. Kicking things off, we have what you know. What could be the really big news from this video? We have this from Crone that was on Zuma's stream. I didn't see the clip on Zuma's stream, but I did see it here. According to Clay, Asim was denied entry to the U.S. today because he didn't have his visa. They later said, luckily, this happened now and not before the major. So fingers crossed, it gets sorted out before then. Which that's it's not like the major's that far away. You know, that's the big concern to me is like, can he get to the major in time? Basically, like they didn't say. Um, they didn't say he didn't like, there wasn't a visa prob like, problem with his visa. He just doesn't have one. So I don't know how quick the turnaround is to get a visa. I've never left the U S so I really don't know how travel works with passports, visas, all that. But I do know that him not having his visa right now is not a good time to not have a visa two weeks out, basically from the start of the major. I think that could be really problematic for New York come the major time. You know, of course I hope things get sorted out and I hope that he's able to play and there are no problems, but I wouldn't be so confident that that's going to be the case. Again, I don't know that much about visas, so I could be wrong and it could be very easy and he could be good to go by tomorrow. I don't know. But I do know that they could be in some trouble otherwise. And then when you think about their substitute, Diamond Con, he also is in Canada. I don't know if he has his visa or not. So either way, there could be some problems with visas if stuff doesn't get sorted out soon. And then it just makes me wonder, you know, their roster, if Asim couldn't play for some reason, I guess Mac would go back to an SMG, Diamond Com would go back to an AR beside Clay if he could get here in time. But if he couldn't get here, what do they do? Do they sign an amateur? Do they bring John in there for the major? I have no idea. Hopefully it's a moot point. Hopefully nothing happens, nothing comes of this, and Asim just gets a visa in time, and he is all good to go. But Clay, you know, he sounded a little bit concerned from the way he was talking in this clip. I, I would not be super confident about him getting things done quickly, but again, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully we're all good and we'll just have to see how that plays out. But definitely a concern and most definitely a storyline to watch as we approach the Stage 4 Major, which is only two weeks out, like I said. So they better get this sorted out quickly. Another clip from Crone, this one about the Paris Legion. Apparently Aqua might be moving to an SMG role. Uh, he was playing it in 8s and in the clip, like he basically, it seemed like he was saying, like, yeah, I'm serious. I'm going to run, you know, a sub. I'm not. 100% sure if that's the case. I know Aqua did run a subway back in the day, and I thought it was funny. I don't know who it was. Somebody in the clip, uh, one of the players said, I thought y'all were fine the way you were. It's like, dude, they're second to last, almost dead last in the league. They've won six matches all year. What do you mean they were fine the way they were? Uh, they're not fine right now. So any change is a welcome change. And this would also coincide with this tweet from Scraps a few days ago that he said, when you get told you're running the Craig, and then he said about, I'm going to enjoy it very, very much. So... I think that'd be a good move in terms of getting scraps back to an AR. I think that was clearly his better role this year. I think he performed much better when he was using a Krig. I I mean, he's been okay as a sub, but it's clear to me that his strengths are when he's running an AR. So for that reason, I would like to see this move a lot, but I just don't know how Aqua's going to look on an SMG. Like, I really have no clue. I feel like he probably can't keep up with the likes of the Terrors, the likes of Asim and Hydra, Kleenex and Vance, etc. But really, can anybody keep up with the Terrors? You know, that's a... That's a tough measuring stick to use, but regardless, it'll be interesting. You know, I would have thought maybe Temp could get back to a submachine gun role instead because not only because, like, I don't think he's been bad on AR. I think he's actually been probably their best player since he moved to the AR and Scraps moves to the SMG. So that's not my problem. My problem is just, or not necessarily problem, but my thought is that Scraps and Aqua, they played pretty well together as an AR duo earlier this year. You know, when they were actually having a little bit of success way back in the beginning, it was because those two were pretty much their best two players. Classic was playing okay back then as well, but those two were their best two on the AR. So maybe maybe they could have went that route to try to get their chemistry back a little bit and get their team going again. But also, like I said, Temp has been pretty solid since the switch to the AR. So I also understand from that perspective why you don't want to take him off of that role. So I don't know for sure, but if potentially this will be the Paris roster, uh, Scraps and Temp on the ARs with Aqua and Zaptius on the SMGs, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it can't really get worse for them, so you might as well give it a try as they're on the outside looking in big time for uh, when it comes to the champs. So that's it for the CDL stuff from the video. Now we'll hop over to the challengers. I know you probably can't see this very well, but this is the EU results from yesterday. I'll just read them off to you quick. So Elevate and Orglis, if you can't see, they are still at the top. They are 5-1. and one. And then Los Pepes and Team War are 3-3. Three and three. Those are the top four right now. The 
was it the original? Yeah, the originals. I can't even hardly read it. And Mavericks, they are two and four as well. They are currently the bottom two teams that would make the elimination bracket or the, yeah, the elimination bracket. And then Amelia Strays and Hot Tub Meta are two and four, you know, out on the outside looking in right now. But there is still two more matches for each team to play. And there's a cluster down here between these three and three and two and four teams. You know, number seven is only one game behind number three. So there's a lot of stuff that could still happen. It will definitely be. You know, tonight's matches in day four of the season are, will be very important, obviously, and we'll see how they go because really anything could happen outside of those top two teams who they will be making the next – they will get a bye basically and guaranteed in the playoffs, but the next six all could have a chance for that elimination bracket, so we will definitely have to watch tonight's matches closely because a lot could happen. That is Zero's team down there at the bottom, Hot Tub Meta, in case you are unaware. So we'll see if they can turn things around. Team War has some big wins but also some bad losses. We'll see. Los Pepes and Elevate played a crazy, crazy checkmate uh, hard point last night. Elevate was up 217 to 60 something, and then they ended up winning 250 to 247. So that was an in insane comeback that was just short of being completed, and that was, you know, awesome. But beyond that, I mean, it's what you expect. Elevate and Oracle's at the top. That is really what we expected heading in, and that's what we're seeing so far. On the NA side of things, okay, not scroll down. I guess I can't. That's weird. Um, okay, you can't see everything, but you can at least see the standings, so that's good. Uh, Trash Bros, which is hollow mock Jin George team and nemo which is randy bambi's team they are the top two teams right now but they are tied essentially with the system and built by gamers the system of course is zed and fellows team and then bbg we've known for a while now uh, lag academy and ut crew at three and three and then easter and sobriety have been eliminated which of course the big surprise is easter being eliminated just because they won i think the past two seasons definitely the most recent one and they've just been pretty much the best challenger team all year long you know definitely north america and maybe worldwide as well so a big fall from grace for those guys they finally got their first win over sobriety yesterday but they did lose to bbg three to two to essentially eliminate them from uh, the season you see tom gravity here he says my first time all year not making elite finals all good rather have our rut now than later that's my boy tom gravity had to throw it in here because i Really want to see that guy succeed, and I want to see him in the league someday, and I think he will be soon, but not a good end to his year for challengers. But I will, or not, it's not the end, but it's, you know, winding down. So here are the results just from yesterday. Here you can see them a little bit. Uh, built by Game, like I said, they beat Easter 3-2. to two. UT Crew, they dropped both their matches as well yesterday. They lost two Trash Bros and LAG Academy, so not a great day for them either. They are still in that knockout bracket. I mean, they're guaranteed to make the knockout bracket because, like I said, Easter and Sobriety can't make it, so... Now they're just playing for seeding, basically the top six. You know, all of them pretty much could be anywhere from one to six. So a lot of important matches to play yet tonight. Um, yeah, that's the way it looks for now, though. We'll see how it plays out. Built by Gamers, they are having a strong season. Good to see from those guys who they've been around all year, but they couldn't quite get over the edge and get over the hump and get into contention. But they're starting to play better, so that's good for those guys. And, you know, LAG Academy still hanging around. Good to see. But Trash Bros and Nemo, two teams that really end the system, I guess. None of these teams really were in... Um, the last season of Challengers League. I guess some of the players were, but the teams weren't. So it's good to see those new teams on top getting some fresh faces and getting some parity in the Challengers scene. That's always good to see extra parity and extra talent, you know, performing well. So that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like down below. Leave a comment as well with your thoughts on what we talked about today. And subscribe to the channel as well if you enjoyed the video and want to see more videos like this one from me uh, in the future. I appreciate all that. It does mean a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a good day today. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.